Hi, this is Amy with your sewing room solution. Your throw plate or your presser foot plate some, has several names. It's whatever covers your feed teeth on your sewing machine. Now there's several different types of them and there's different sizes depending on the sewing machine you have. So I have two different sizes here and yours may look a little different but the si what I want to show you in the difference is very important and they're available for any brand or any type of sewing machine. Now what you want to see in the throw plate is the actual opening of the throw plate. What you want to see in the throw plate is most of them come with a standard oval opening and that opening can be anywhere from five millimeter to seven millimeter and it's an opening that your needle goes through through the center okay now they have a single hole throw plate that is available for quilting or it's also available when you're working with very fine fabrics, even quilt piecers like them. Have you ever tried to start to sew with an, like an oval opening throw plate and the fabric gets pulled down to the inside and you say a fat, few bad words because the fabric's been sucked down inside there? The single hole throw plate will correct that for you. So you might want to purchase a single hole throw plate. I always buy one for my sewing machine as an extra. Uh, some manufacturers throw them in depending on you know what brand you have. The other thing that you need to be worried about with your throw plate, not worried about, it's an, it's an option. Um, some sewing machine throw plates are uh, metric and some people don't do metric very well. Um, they're done in millimeters and some people don't convert millimeters very well. They have English throw plates or done in, in inches. So you can have an oval in, throw plate in inches, a single hole throw plate with inches, or you can have a single hole or an oval in millimeters, totally up to you. But what you need to be careful of is the care of that throw plate. If you are a needle breaker, which means when you sew, your hands in the front and your hands in the back, and you're yanking your way through your fabric, pulling, 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 and you break needles and break needles and break needles, after a while, your throw plate gets damaged. It gets lots of chunks picked out of the back, and then you get your emery board and you sand away and you sand away because it's all rough. What happens is that thickness gets real thin and it actually changes the engineering of that throw plate. Your machine starts to sound noisy and it also starts to break a lot of threads and that becomes frustrating. There's nothing worse on this earth than broken threads every couple stitches and that includes embroidery. Now for embroidery I use a single hole throw plate only. It's standard. That's what I put on with the compression foot, the one that your uh, manufacturer recommends, because it prevents what we call flagging. When you have a single hole throw plate and you put the needle down through the hole, there's no room for the hoop and the fabric to bounce up and down, and that's called flagging. So you get a much smoother run and less tension on the thread as it's going up and down from the bobbin case to the top of the needle. So that's always a perfect option for embroidery. So I'm gonna show you the differences in the throw plates and also what a bad throw plate looks like that needs to be replaced. And I will tell you, I always keep a spare throw plate in the back of my sewing cabinet because you never know when you're gonna take a chip off of one or you have an option that maybe you've got a piece of fabric that's just not cooperating that you need that single hole throw plate. On this particular throw plate, this is what you don't want to see. This is one that's been sanded and sanded and sanded all those needle marks away. And what's happened over time, it's gotten very rough inside this opening and the needle and thread catch in here and just causes you grief. It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't save you any time. And over time, it doesn't save you any money because mechanically it just damages things underneath of the throw plate as time goes on. This little guy right here, you can see this has a six millimeter opening that we talked about and you can see this is marked off, this is an English throw plate, it's marked off in uh, half inches and inches and it's a uh, little sister has the single hole and this is what we talked about and this is what I use for embroidery and this is what I use for uh, my quilt piecing and when I'm sewing lightweight fabrics like silks and satins and things I don't want pulled down inside 
this hole. So no matter what kind of sewing you do, no matter what kind of sewing machine you have, you have these opportunities for your sewing machine. So take advantage of them. If you have a frustration with your sewing machine, whether it's broken needles, you're not getting the correct um, stitch width or the correct stitch um, seam allowance on your sewing machine or you're having unable to read it you're having some sort of problem like that by all means see your sewing machine dealer that's what they're there for and you may be just as simple as having the wrong throw plate or a damaged throw plate so take advantage of the education that your sewing machine dealer trains for and stop in and check out and see what kind of throw plates they have for your particular brand of sewing machine and they are brand specific so make sure you see the dealer you bought your sewing machine from. Remember, this is your sewing room solutions.